Hello and welcome back to the Nasty Metal Predictor Channel here at YouTube and welcome to Box Set Showcase episode number 11. Wow, 11 episodes. Damn. Alright, so for episode number 11 here is of course is going to be a spotlighted on of course the Samson Bright Lights the albums 1979 and 1981. Of course, uh, it, this is definitely was fairly recently added into my collection. I mean, I showed this off in my uh, most recent collection update, and of course, I talked about head on, of course, uh, as part of my album of the week spotlight uh, last week. I've already talked about that, but. Still, even though this still being fairly recent and normally, it, it, I don't know, you can be quite honest, it really doesn't matter that, uh, on when it comes to rules on what to do for a spotlight. I mean, I could have held this off a year later, but you know what? I, I really want, want, when I, uh, wanted to show this uh, in good depth. I mean, yes, it was released last year, but goddamn, I really want, uh, want to go into at least depth in this one. I think this is a very cool freaking box set but without just talking about it let's definitely start let me definitely start showing what's inside here so without further ado let's get right in all right so here we have the box here front cover the back which of course uh, again uh, listing all the track listings for all the five CDs here of course, again, artworks. Of course, spine. Now, it's time to get into opening up the box. It's again, kind of like a, almost a clamshell, I guess they uh, seem to refer this as. So here we go. We have a uh, Basically, it seems to be a more of a poster in a way. So let's take a look at this. Mm. Shit. Very, very cool. Very cool. Of course, uh, the back here is basically more like a little write-up and so on on uh, on the uh, basically the whole band and the history and so on. It's all there. Ugh. All right. So there we go. That was that. Now it's on to the actual. CDs here, so CD1 here, which of course is their very the very first album here, Survivors. And so we have the front cover here. Back cover. Uh, track listing. Also, in, uh, again, band members on the back here. Again, uh, as far as the bonus tracks here, we of course uh, have the, uh, the 1979  7-inch uh, ver uh, version for a Mr. Rock and Roll, which of course was a uh, basically a re-recording of the track and of course a newer track called Primrose Shuffle. And of course here is uh, basically the alternative recordings with Bruce Dickinson on vocals. So on. Though uh, the recording quality definitely seems to vary within the, these tracks here. Definitely tends to vary. Uh, especially when you get it to like Big Brother and uh, Tomorrow or Yesterday. Very rough uh, sounding demos, though, though for, for the most part, the rest of these with uh, Bruce Dickinson on vocals definitely seem to be very, a little, a little more better quality in terms of uh, recording and so on, and mastering. Very, very, very cool. So, uh, of course, the CD. Definitely not my favorite album from Samson. Though still, uh, still not a bad album. Though it's still very cool to listen to. I mean, I gave this one a second listen uh, before doing this uh, video here, and uh, it, it's definitely not a bad album. Just again, it's just not my favorite uh, from Samson. 
but still good in any ways. Definitely great humble beginnings. Here, we record, here of course, we go to uh, disc number two, which, of course, would be the original... Basically, in many ways, would be the uh, original version mix of Head On. I already elaborated uh, plenty a bit of that on my uh, album of the week spotlight for this very album. So here we have the front cover. Back cover, which, of course, uh, here... Which, of course, now we'll get uh, bonus tracks here, basically uh, being the uh, B-side for the uh, track Head On, Angel with the Machine Gun, track called Kingsway Jam, and, of course, uh, the 7-inch edit of Vice Versa. CD. I already talked about this album anyways on, again, on my Album of the Week spotlight for this album anyways, so I don't have to really elaborate uh, too much on it other than definitely a great album and the beginning of of where uh, Paul Sampson was definitely what was beginning to spread his wings. And, of course, Bruce Dickinson on vocals, which, of course, uh, going by the name, Bruce Bruce. Great album. Good album. Now, of course, we get to disc number three, which, of course, is, again, I already elaborated on this, so I don't have to talk too much anyways. This, of course, is the Tony Platt alternative mix uh, for Head On. And uh, if you want to know, uh, Tony Platt, of course, is uh, best known for uh, producing albums such as One Vice at a Time from Crocus, Another Perfect Day from Motorhead, and also being an uh, uh, engineer on, of course, Highway to Hell, Back in Black, for those about to rock, and Flick of the Switch from uh, ACDC. So we have the front cover here. Back cover. Of course, this contains one bonus track, that being the 7-inch uh, edit of Hard Times. Great fucking live shot, of course, of Bruce Dickinson showing a lot of chest hair, and of course, a little shorter hair, and a mustache. <laughs> First, now we have the CD. Again, I don't need to elaborate too much on this mix. I already elaborated quite a bit on this mix anyways on my Am the Week spotlight of Head On. Definitely my absolute uh, favorite uh, version of Head On. And again, my my personal uh, version for this album. Uh, I, I definitely recommend this version to a lot of everyone. I recommend this version of Head On. Definitely my preferred, my preferred version for the album. All right, so it's now on to disc number four, which of course is, of course, the third full-length album from um, Shock Tactics, released in 1981. So we have the front cover here. Back cover. Which, of course, uh, right here uh, contains three bonus tracks. We got the B-side for uh, Riding with the Angels, which is titled Little Big Man. And, of course, we get two demos uh, for the songs Pyramid to the Skies and Losing My Grip. Both of these two songs would then get re-recorded properly for, of course, uh, Before the Storm with Nicky Moore on vocals, who, of course, uh, had replaced Bruce Dickinson. Anyways, it's very interesting, very cool to hear Bruce Dickinson sing these versions. Uh, still very cool. Though Little Big Man's a little shorter on this one. They kind of seem to really cut out a, a bit of the length on the track. It's, it was originally, like, what, a little over four minutes, but they kind of cut it down to a little over, uh, like, what, three minutes and 50 seconds or so. Because, uh, again, it was taken from, of course, a vinyl rep. Though a very professional vinyl rep, though, definitely. Still, nonetheless, very cool. First, here we have the CD. Definitely a good album. Uh, definitely, uh, it's very difficult which album I like more. I think I already elaborated a bit that on my album of the week spotlight for Head On that Head On is probably my favorite album from Samson, but this is also a very good album though. Again, Tony Platt producing this one too. And, and he definitely... Uh, does pretty good with this one. I do have to also say and elaborate that 
that dry mix and sounding that uh, you kind of got on Flick of the Switch is really also apparent on this one. It really has the same kind of dry production that Flick of the Switch uh, has, which uh, in many ways kind of also adds to the charm of the sound too. It's definitely a good album for sure and definitely beginning of that um, the sound that you really would definitely would get with a lot of the albums after Shock Tactics. So definitely a good classic album from Samson. Uh, did I also show the CD anyways? Did I? Yeah, I must have did. <laughs> Alright, it's on to disc number five and the final disc here. That of course is none other than Live at Reading 1981. So here we have the uh, front cover here. Though slightly altered cover when, uh, I mean, it's definitely different compared to the original vinyl uh, release from 1990. But it still um, is very close to a lot of the later reissue uh, versions for the album cover of this uh, album here. So there we go. Uh, CD1 here. I mean, back now back cover here. This, of course, does contain, contain some bonus tracks, that being rehearsal ver uh, stuff for, of course, songs such as Red Skies, Turn Out the Lights, and Flying, no, Firing Line. Uh, again, all three of these would later would end up getting re-recorded with uh, Nicky Moore on vocals, especially for uh, the Before the Storm album. Uh, Firing Lane, of course, uh, would end up being like a B-side to one of the songs off of uh, for, for, uh, Before the Storm and uh, end up... Uh, uh, being changed to the title "Running Out of Time," still very cool, very, 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 uh, very cool. Very definitely raw sounding though when it comes to rehearsals, but still not bad. Uh, of course, uh, also I should also point out that the song "Gravy Train," which of course is a part of the actual live album, would also uh, would get re-recorded with Nicky Moore on vocals and uh, being under the name "I'll Be Round." apparently was also the original title for uh, but I guess who I don't know if Bruce Dickinson was uh, behind uh, the idea of changing uh, the title I don't know it's up to debate it's never being again elaborated but there we go so live at reading 1981 this will be the only live album with of course uh, during the Bruce Dickinson era of Samson and of course after this he would eventually would leave for Iron Maiden, and it was even on this night that Rod Smallwood uh, confronted Bruce Dickinson, and again, history is, well, it's been cemented. Definitely a great fucking live album. This is definitely, if, if there's really an album uh, for anybody to get a good feel of the Bruce Dickinson era of Samson, or at least a good idea of how Bruce Dickinson was, was uh, how he was before joining Iron Maiden, this is a good album to also check out. This is definitely a good one. It gives you the best idea of how Samson was with uh, Bruce Dickinson on vocals. Great stuff. Of course, uh, Paul Samson is on fire during this night. He is just exceptionally on fire throughout this uh, recording. Definitely a great sounding, great set list, great sound. Uh, even for, for, for an album that has no dubs, it sounds pre pretty perfect to my ears. So a classic fucking album here. Also, uh, there's the uh, CD there. Forgot to show that. But yeah, this is a great fucking live album. Huh. <sighs> so here we go. There it is. There is all of the bright lights. The album's 1979, 1981. Definitely a great fucking box set. I'll definitely eventually be adding more of the uh, Samson box sets to my collection here so with that again any of those who is very much still interested in grabbing this uh, it's still very affordable you can still can find this for again for very good prices online so with that I hope you all enjoyed uh, this is every thrash I say I'm out I'll see you all later take care everyone